independent design review panel. We are three of those. There's about 130, 140 uh, people that sit on that panel across the UK. I'm an architect and town planner for my sins and uh, worked over 30 years in an uh, architectural practice that also had a planning uh, division. Jonathan, do you want to say a few words about yourself? Yeah, so yeah, my name's John Vernon Smith. Um, I'm a chartered architect, uh, but mostly an urban designer. I work in private practice predominantly, producing sort of master planning urban design projects nationwide. I also front number sort of planning appeals, and um, I sit, I've been sitting on this design review panel for about 10 years, reviewing all sorts of schemes, mostly with sort of urban design input, but anything from sort of one-off houses to student housing and infrastructure projects. Hi, I'm Louise Ball. I'm a chartered landscape architect. Um, I'm a director of a small practice in Somerset called Swampool Partnership, where as a practice we've been together for 40 years. Um, I've been there for about 15. Um, I've worked in public charity in the days of groundwork and private practice. And I've been, like I say, with, with uh, uh, Swampool now for 15 years as a, as a director there. Like Jonathan, I've been on the design review panel for over 10 years and have looked at a multitude of schemes, especially as a landscape architect. We promote high quality and sustainable design. Secondly, we are in independent and impartial feedback. We have no contracts uh, with uh, developers or local authorities or anybody whatsoever. We are employed simply to do a design review and that's been successful for the last 10 years, contributed by these two and many others. The panel members' selection is anonymous until you see them at the panel day which we think is a good thing because then people don't see, try and get round the back door to, to, to sort of influence. Not that they would, of course. Multidisciplinary expertise. So you've got an urban designer, a landscape architect and myself today, but uh, we vary that depending on, or the uh, chairman of the panel varies that depending on the, the type of scheme and what's required. No ongoing contracts with that local authorities or developers, so they've got no influence upon us and what we do. Reduce the burden for local authorities because it's on the developer to employ uh, the design review panel if they so choose. And then separation from uh, the decision maker. But last and uh, not least is that we are very independent. And just to give you an indication, this was uh, a recent planning appeal where the inspector made it very clear that they do take design review panels uh, views very seriously. The question really would be from your perspective, A, how much additional time do you think that the process of going through the panel added to the application, and did you get feedback from the applicant? Presumably they felt it was good value for money. I'm just interested in, in hearing both sides of it, you know, whether the local authority found it helpful and the application was successful first time rather than having to go back, and whether the applicant felt it was helpful in terms of the process from their perspective. I think, I think generally, um, I mean, we do a lot of these reviews, and as I say, I think the three of us have been doing it for about 10 years. Uh, generally, it's, it's very positively received, um, both at the session and, and, and afterwards. Um, as I say, most of our sessions, well, all of our sessions invite uh, the local authority along, and uh, we actually have a sort of a part of the session involves, so that the applicant will present, and then we, we invite um, whoever's come from the local authority, whether they be planning officers or design officers, to have input at that point and that might be to tell us about the process or to tell us about the engagement that's been happening or, or even to talk to us about some of the issues that um, are coming out of the project and, and as an aside to that traditionally a lot of our a lot of the referrals we get for design review panel um, come from local authorities themselves and when i'm sat on the other side of the table i'm currently involved in presenting a lot of my schemes to to, to design review panels in order to inform the process so are they are they useful i mean we, we tend to get positive feedback from applicants but particularly from local authorities it's been we, the, the feedback we get is that our advice helps to kind of uh, I, I suppose broaden their thinking or, or sort of provoke ideas that um, people haven't thought about or question things in a different way or help to kind of work through as a sort of an extra pair of hands I suppose that um, contributes to the process so we, we aim to contribute we aim to add value we aim to help steer the process and where there is debate between a a local planning authority and a, an applicant, then you know, we're happy to engage in that process and add to it where we can. Hope that answers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's quite the as, as mm. Phil said, we, we never know who's going to be on the panel, which is always really interesting. So, we do turn up on site and go, Oh, we've got an ecologist on this one, there must be sort of an ecology reason for that. So, the panel is very broad, broad in terms of its experience. You might have a transport, you might have an ecologist, a landscape, always have a landscape architect and an architect. 
to have a planner, but someone in private practice it's a planner. So in, in that sense, the, if a planning officer from the local authority does turn up, they can see all different aspects and different responses from, from, the, from the team, from ourselves. Which I think, and for the clients, they find that, uh, whoever's brought the scheme to, to the panel, do find that quite uh, enriching. Um, because they think, oh, yeah, I didn't think about that with ecology. So, yeah, we, we, we tend to get quite good feedback because we've got quite a broad scope of professions. I think your question was about quicker. It's an interesting Is it worth the time, I think, isn't yeah. it? Um, the, I think the, the issue here is that, you know, had some of these not been seen a design review, they would have just been straight refused. And so you have to look at it in the context of, you know, how, how long is a piece of string? Mm. It's very difficult. I think in terms of the necessity, we find people want to come back um, quite often the second time from the first one. So obviously they hopefully found it rewarding in term, and constructive, which is the aim of the game, not to be... It's a critique, but it's a constructive critique, not a destructive critique, because that's not in anybody's interest. What we want to do is improve the environment, improve the design, the quality of schemes, and the environment we're, we're leaving for our, um, you know, uh, the, the, you know future, generations. future generations. So I hope that answers your question. We do tend to get told where there are there is some local resistance, and we try and assist with that um, to try and understand what it is. But that's um, that's probably the limit of that because we're really commenting on the design before us, not. The, the peripheral aspects, unless they are determinant like conservation areas, listed buildings, and, and context. Do you ever say no? Like, I mean, <laughs> you've tweaked that one and, and made it work, but has there ever, ever been a scheme where you've gone, no, that's, that's just a no? Yeah, many, many a time. Yes. And um, what we tend to, when, we, when they present it, and each one of us as a discipline give our feedback, and the, the point is we're not meant to tread on other people's toes. So I will never speak about the architecture, and the architecture shouldn't speak about the landscape. Blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. That never happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, and then we have like a breakout um, where the client then goes out of the room, and we have a discussion on our own for about 15 minutes, and we feed that back to them when they come back in. And you tend to find those where the schemes where we're only out of the room for about three or four minutes are the ones that have been really unsuccessful because the designers aren't arguing amongst themselves about what they like and what they don't like and what works and what doesn't work. And that I have sat on quite a few panels where we've gone, we really think perhaps you need to rethink it. Yeah. Um, we're not here to design it for you, but it would be useful if you perhaps take some of the, our suggestions away. Um, I, I can think of many. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're always careful to, uh, and the answer is yes, we have, we, we have um, told schemes that we think they need to go away and come back, but we're always very careful to be positive about that. And that means telling them why we think that. And sometimes it's just an absence of the correct sort of baseline or preparatory work so that there's no site analysis or there's no or there's no wider landscape analysis that's that's a very Thank common you. theme there's no lvia um or there is significant issues that haven't been considered such as heritage or listed buildings so those are probably the most common ones and it's it becomes quite easy to see why schemes aren't heading in the right direction uh, just by looking at the absence but i suppose we are always encouraging and as as bill says it's positive criticism in that you know, we we feel that you know this is a great site but in order to inform the scheme you know, ideally we would have X, Y, and Z in terms of, um, of baseline studies. Um, I think um, I've only had one scheme where I've chaired a panel and we've decided that the scheme just wasn't ready for panel. That's only happened to me once in 10 years of chairing two panels. So, um, so usually there's something good to say. <clears throat> I've got a question from online about um, sort of cost. I think, Sarah, you, you touched on it earlier, actually, but um, is, is there a cost associated with these panels? There, there is a cost, yes, um, and, and it varies. So um, I couldn't tell you exactly how much it is um, <laughs> because these things change all the time, and panels do slightly vary in terms of cost, I believe. But um, I can only answer for our own panel, um, which is that we have a sort of a scale of services which go from a, a sort of an online review where uh, material is submitted and there is a sort of a team style uh, review and uh, although they tend to be for repeat panels where we've already seen the scheme once and we don't feel we need to go to site again for, for instance mm -hmm. and then I think it goes up from there so we have I think a half day where we go and have a look at the site and then we have a full day so so we do try and cater for different sizes and scales um, I have to say that um, most of the panels that I've sat on and chaired have been a, a half or a full day um, because I the feeling I get from um, applicants and, and clients who are promoting their own schemes, particularly for one-off houses, is that they want the design review feedback to be as robust and carry as much weight as possible. Um, and in order to do that, you know, I'm sure you'll all agree that the feeling is that if a panel have been to a site and seen a site, 
and considered everything in the round, then that feedback is going to be much more informed and much more useful to the applicant. Yeah, and, and sometimes, like uh, as Jennifer was saying, if we're looking at something like Power 84, um, properties that have come to mm. us, they may come to, to us four times, which and, and they tend to, the administrator tries to keep the same members on the panel, so there's a consistency, so they're not having to re-explain things, um, which I think is really important. So we, it, sometimes it may delay the process in trying to get the right people together and the same team together, but it, it, it's really constructive for the clients then at the end of the day. Um, and sometimes when it's come to us a fourth time, it may just be a desktop review, what's got, so all the information is given to us, and then we sort of almost do a report on that. But um, certainly it's really interesting with some of the larger ones, if they have come back, to see how the process has changed and how they've listened to some of our, sort of, uh, our ideas or how we've sort of approached the scheme and how they've interpreted that, um, often for the better. Yeah. I, can't, I mean, I, we can't comment on cost because we're not uh, the people that organise these things, so we the people that carry out the reviews. So, but to give you an idea of the, of the range, I, I did one recently, for, I think it was an hour and a half, two hours, which was looking at a scheme that had failed at appeal, that they'd come back with a revised scheme uh, for a tall building in a uh, harbour setting, um, and that was a very, we hadn't seen the site, we didn't need to see the site because um, they, they'd sent us a, a visual assessment of the site, and really they were looking for an endorsement of what they had or where they were going after the appeal, so that was a couple of hours. So it depends on what they are asking or what is being asked of us very often, but most often it's, it's a one day where we go out, we look at the site in the morning, we ask questions, we wander the site, we, always, we often actually take them places they haven't taken us on the site because we want to see and understand them. And then we have the review in the afternoon. Mm. And we do it voluntary yeah. as well. It's all, it's all voluntary. I suppose one yeah, of the questions right. that keeps flashing up here is, um, have you joined? Do you get a tap on the shoulder from Jonathan at a conference <laughs> saying, you're, you're recruited into my panel? Something like that. I mean, we, I mean what I would say is we're, we're very encouraging of um, different disciplines um, and as much variety as possible, really. Different levels of experience, different, different disciplines. So, uh, you know, they're not looking for... You know, 20, 30 years of experience, or you know, that's probably what's reflected in front of you. Um, but um, and I've, I've personally recommended lots of other urban designers, um, particularly in different geographical re regions, so that um, I don't have to drive up to you know sort of uh, North Manchester to do reviews, for example. So, yeah, a lot by recommendation, um, and, and we do have people apply to join. And you know, I think um, Jonathan's keen to, to keep building a variety. Yeah. This is another Jonathan, by the way. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, just for confusion. I, I mean, I'll, I'll give you an example to answer the question. Is I was I did. Um, two design reviews down in Plymouth for a scheme. Subsequently, we went on to get planning but never got built. Um, and uh, about six, nine months afterwards, I was uh, asked by uh, Jonathan, who runs the panel, um, whether I would like to join the panel. I had previously had two invita invitations from other design panels, but I'd refused. Um, and I hadn't been working in the industry for 30 years. Um, I actually liked the approach that they took when they reviewed our scheme. And you can imagine it wasn't an easy ride because we had two reviews to get there. Um, and the local authority in there. So, I was just invited after that um, to give some comments, etc. Oh. Shall I read it? So, so why would you do a design panel compared to LPA pre-app, who have more local oh, understanding? Yes. <laughs> oh, oh. You're on the clock here, okay? So it's not it's not, an, it's not a half day session. May I start again yes. and hand, hand over? Um, so yeah, lots of personal experience here. Where um, currently. Um, working with a, uh, a local authority with a, an excellent urban design officer um, and we're doing design review panels as well and I think the consensus as an applicant team is that it's good to get some variety, it's good to get multidisciplinary input um, and, it's, and it's hopefully mutually beneficial for the LPA urban design officer and the um, and the design panel, uh, and when we have a review, we all sit in the same room and I present the proposals and the local authority design, and design officer is there, uh, as are the design panel, and everyone contributes, and I think it um, expands the process. So uh, these tend to be larger strategic schemes, and I think um, you know, the more hands, the better, and hopefully um, it, it's helpful for that urban design officer to, um, to get a wider view. Also, a lot of local authorities have lost their landscape architects, ecologists, conservationists, they just aren't there, so it's useful to have those on the panel um, for the local planning authority to, to just see what their views are. Um, we, we find, you know, we just haven't got, the, the, the local authorities haven't got that resource in-house. I think, I think um, as an architect and a planner, thank you. Um, I think uh, that there is a need for design um, advice on particular sites um, to assist the local authority in their, their deliberations, because I think... Um, we've heard today about building regulations and all sorts of other aspects. Well, a design panel can touch upon those um, and help and assist the local authority. And whether that's to refuse an application or to approve an application, it just gives it added weight 
um, in terms of that advice. So I can see the work two working together, but I don't think a, a, the, the pre-app is largely policy driven. And yes, there are design issues, but at the time you're getting a pre-app, you're not necessarily seeing the design challenges that await because they aren't there in front of you. Whereas architects and the design panel can see those challenges that are perhaps potentially coming over the horizon. Um, and so I think, again, the multidisciplinary approach is a good one. And I think it gives that design and, and the sustainability edge very early on in the process. Uh, just a, another very brief anecdote, if I may, that um, my client was keen to take our um, master plan to, to the panel uh, for 200 homes. And the reason that uh, we went to panel was because we had a great planning officer, but they said, well, we don't have an urban design officer. And um, we're keen to be robust on design so that when we um, you know, take this scheme through application and uh, make our recommendation, uh, we're able to add some design weight to that. Um, the, so, so, yeah, the, the, the panel input was invaluable, and although the scheme was eventually approved through uh, the appeal process, there was no design reason for refusal, and um, there was confidence amongst officers that um, we'd been through that robust design process.